This presentation will be a demonstration of three of the more commonly found torque wrenches in dentistry today. The first torque wrench that we'll discuss is more, most commonly associated with the Nobel BioCare products. It's a double beam torque wrench which has a larger body that houses the uh, components on the inside and a more slender lever arm with a handle. It also has an indicator bar which indicates the in this case uh, 15 and 35 newton centimeters of torque as well as an opening to accept the driver. You'll notice on this particular torque wrench on this side over here there's a little positioning device with an arrow. This arrow should always be facing the direction in which you wish to apply the torquing force. This arrow can be changed simply by pulling this out, turning it, and putting it back in. Pull it out, turn it, and let it allow it to seat back in. You'll also notice next to the arrow indicator is a small gear which can be adjusted. can be loosened and it can be tightened. If you notice on the side of the torque wrench that accepts the driver inside there's a little latch mechanism. The gear serves to position the latch mechanism by extending it or retracting it. It's very important that the latch mechanism is tightened completely when using the torque wrench. So the two things you want to ensure are that the arrow is pointing in the direction that you wish to apply the torque and force and that the gear is completely tightened so that the latch mechanism is completely extended allowing it to give the maximum engagement to the driver. Next, let's look at the driver. This particular driver has two components. The actual driver portion with a hex head that engages the screw. It's very important that you have the appropriate driver for the implant system so that the, the hex head can engage completely, as well as the handle that allows you to use this either as a standalone wrench or it allows you to engage it in a torque wrench as a driver. The two components separate simply by pulling apart and they engage with a latch head. It's important when you use the system to make sure that the two are completely and fully engaged and typically that's done by placing the two components together and spinning the handle until it clicks. Put it in, spin the handle until it clicks. It's very important that these two are completely engaged and it's also very important that prior to using the torque wrench that you verify that these two are completely engaged. Don't assume that whoever used this system before you left this completely engaged. If you don't engage the two components what can happen is when you go to use the torque wrench the lower portion can actually fall out and obviously we don't want that for a variety of reasons. So you want to make sure that those two are completely together and engaged. As I said earlier, this can be used as a standalone wrench and if you look at the top portion here, 
there's a little portion of the driver that can actually spin as is evidenced by the black dot here and that's so you can use finger pressure on that engage it in the screw and then twist that to hand tighten the implant screw of the abutment prior to torquing. These two items are engaged again with a click. When you use the torque wrench, it's very important. When you use the torque wrench, it's very important that you make sure that when you put the driver into the screw, that it's completely and fully engaged. Failure to do that can cause stripping of the screw. After that's completely engaged, place one finger on top of the torque wrench and the other finger or hand basically grasps the slender bar and you apply your torquing force to the screw of the above it. As the torquing force is applied, the, the beam will deflect until it reaches the desired torque value, in this case 35. My finger is only on the indicator bar for the purpose of the demonstration. It's very important that you only keep two fingers on the slender lever arm. The second type of torque wrench that we'd like to go over is essentially a torque wrench that's most commonly associated with the Zimmer system and it's very simple in that it only has one bar and the way this torque wrench works is it has a driver that should not be used as a standalone wrench if you were going to use a standalone wrench for this type of system you would use a wrench such as this but in this particular system this driver is placed into the torque wrench and it has a friction fit. And the same principle applies. You make sure that the driver is completely engaged in the screw. One finger goes on top. Apply the torquing force until the system deflects or snaps or breaks. And that's how you know this particular torque has been achieved. These types of torque wrenches uh, come in various torques. This one happens to be 30 newton centimeters. You can get these in 15, 25, 30, 35. And basically it works for anything that has a or needs a torque value of 30, 30 newton centimeters. Lastly, we'll look at a torque wrench that works very much the same as the one we just talked about. The difference here being, this is a universal torque wrench. And by universal, I mean that it, it can be set for various torques and it's adjustable. This one has 10, 20, 30, infinity, des as designated by these markers. And on the other side, 15, 25, and 35. It's very simple to adjust this by turning the screw head on the end of the device. And simply by moving that in one direction or the other, you can move the indicator bar to the desired amount of torque. It has a, this, it accepts the same type of implant driver friction fit and that seats in and the same principle applies to make sure that it's actually seated one finger on top and you apply the torquing force until the beam deflects or breaks and that's how you know you've achieved the desired torquing force it's very important that you verify that the, that the 
torque wrench is set for the desired value of torque that you intend to use it for. Never assume that the person that used this prior to you has left it where you may intend to use it. It's very important. It's also worth pointing out that with this type of torque wrench, whenever this torque wrench is sterilized, it should be sterilized in the broken position to prevent corrosion of the internal mechanisms. And so there you have a demonstration of three of the more common torque wrenches used in dentistry today.